Hey guys, today we're taking a look at another interesting computer in the collection here. This is an Epson Equity 1E. Uh, back in the day everyone was getting in on the IBM clone market and Epson was one of them. And um, this is probably a machine from the late 80s, maybe early 90s. Um, it's interesting for a few reasons, which I'll get into. Well, actually, one reason that it's very interesting, but uh, other than that, let's just take a look at it. Um, it's a power button, nothing interesting styling, reset button, there's a speed button, that acts as the turbo. Um, actually what this is, this isn't an 8088 machine, it's actually an 8086. And for those that don't know, um, the original IBM PC, the 5150, had an 8088. And a lot of the PC computers had an 8088. Um, the 8086 was actually was the full version of the chip. Uh, it was 16-bit, internal and external. The 8088 was a cut-down version, and it was 16-bit internal, but 8-bit external. And IBM did this just because it was cheaper. Um, but the 8086 and 8088, as far as I, they're probably like 99% compatible as far as like programs and things like that go. Um, so it wasn't a big deal. It's really just the 8086 was faster. Not too much, but it was a little bit faster. And this machine has an 8086 in it. And um, there are other there's other machines that have 8086s, and you have to watch out because sometimes um, the motherboard actually isn't. 16 bit, so it's an 8086, but it's still running uh, like an 8088. It's it's it would be like an 8 bit board. This computer, though, it's a true 8086 and it's a 16 bit motherboard, so this is very fast as far as PC class computers go. Um, there's the turbo button, it runs at I believe default, it runs at 8 megahertz and you hit the speed button, which in my opinion is better than a turbo button because turbo it implies, you know, you press it and then it's turbo mode and usually it's the opposite except for earlier ones that it's confusing mess. Speed, speed button, it just makes sense to me. You press the speed button, it changes the speed. So defaults 8 megahertz, you press the speed button and it's 10 megahertz, boosts it up. Uh, there's not too much room, there's the power button there. Not too much room for expansion. You just have these two uh, three and a half inch slots. Um, it does not. The there's a built-in floppy controller. It doesn't support uh, high density drives. Uh, so that's a 720 kilobyte drive. Now when I got this, uh, that's the drive that was in it, and under it was a um, it was a hard drive. It was an ID hard drive. Actually, the uh, 8-bit IDE hard drive controller that you may have saw in my Commodore Colt video used to be in this machine, but I took it out. I don't, originally these machines though, I believe they came with MFM drives and controllers. And there, it was a small form factor MFM drive, which I've never personally seen, but I just, uh, I kind of just made that, uh, this cover here. I took one from another computer and there's, you can see it's, it was supposed to be flush with this and out more. But I just took this from another computer and I like hacked off the sides and there's screw holes. I just screwed it in so it looks a little bit nicer. Although you can see there's like a crack in it. Uh, but you know, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. So on our back, actually this belonged to Washington County, Virginia School. Yeah, someone left the so. Long way from home. <laughs> so here we have the back of the machine. Pretty standard. Let's see. Okay. All right. So cool thing about this is you have PS2 ports. So you get to run an old school, you know, 8086 machine, and you get PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. That's nice, because that means you can use a more modern keyboard without an adapter, and you can use a laser mouse, which is nice. Um, the video, uh, the built-in video actually, is what's really interesting about this machine, because this, as far as anyone knows, 
is the only non-IBM computer that has MCGA built in. Um, I guess it's not that impressive. What MCGA is, it was a video format. It was kind of a cut down version of VGA. Um, it did, you know, CGA, it did VGA, but it didn't do some of the higher resolution VGA modes, I believe, and it didn't do EGA at all. Um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of pointless. It, and the thing was, full VGA wasn't that much more expensive to implement. So really, other than this computer, only the IBM, uh, some of the IBM lines had uh, MCGA and there was never any standalone MCGA cards produced. It was just, it was pointless. Um, why would you do that when you can just make a VGA card that everyone's gonna want and it really didn't cost that much more. So, kind of a cool distinction of this computer. Parallel card, serial card, you can tell right away this uses a riser slot. Uh, one, two, three, four expansions. So, I'm gonna open up, we'll take a look inside. All right, I gotta get a real work table for these one day, but um, here you can see the inside of the case where I kind of just hacked up that cover. So here's the machine inside. Uh, it's a really good condition. Um, it's your eight bit slots, the four of them. Um, and I'll show you some. And if you're coming from the blog or if you're going to go to the blog after this, watching this, just keep in mind, I, I done a lot of changing to this computer between writing that entry, that article in the blog, and doing this video, so there are some things that are different, some, like the video card uh, I, I changed, and there's no longer a hard drive in this machine, but um, anyways, uh, right here, there's this is an 8087 math coprocessor. Like I always say, it's not really going to get a lot of use, but I hate seeing an empty socket, so... I end up getting this one. Um, make sure you get one rated for at least 10 megahertz. So, um, this, probably can't see it too well, but this is, it's the 8086, but I've upgraded it. So just like you can upgrade an 8088 with an NEC V20, you can upgrade an 8086 with a V30, which is what I did here. Um, also make sure if you do do this upgrade, make sure the chip you get is rated for 10 megahertz. So actually, um, you know, between this being a, a 16 megabyte board, um, this the, v, uh, the V30 running at 10 megahertz, for a PC class machine this is really fast. This is, we're reaching 286 levels. Um, so this is probably equivalent of a, of a slower 286, maybe an 8 or a 9 megahertz 286, um, which, you know, it's impressive because 286 is kind of like the next level up. It's like, uh, you know, crude analogy, it's like getting a V4 to run, you know, like a pretty good V6 engine. Um, so here's, this is the, uh, the built-in RAM. Sorry if I'm a little, I had no sleep, so. If I'm rambling or I'm a little bit off with my speech, please excuse me. Um, we got 640 kilobytes built into the motherboard, and here's <laughs> it's a lit. It's not a nickel cadmium battery. It's actually a lithium battery, but instead of a coin, it's like a traditional battery. And this is, looks like the original one, and it hasn't leaked. It still looks like it's in really good shape. Um, we actually have a real speaker doesn't have a one of those little piezo speakers it's cool um, slots it can support full-length cards obviously <sighs> you know just some more interesting chips back there just the chipset and the bios and all that power connector uh, pretty standard I think that's just the standard AT connector and built-in floppy so you have built-in floppy support um, Obviously, you're not going to fit a bigger drive, so you're not going to be fitting a, a even a 360 kilobyte a five and a quarter inch drive. So you're going to be stuck with the uh, 720 kilobytes. And if you're going to get a hard drive, you're either going to need you know like a 8-bit IDE controller, or uh, you're going to have to find those weird slim form factor MFM drives. So um, I'll show you what I put in it real quick. 
So first for sound, I believe this is, it's not the same card, but it's the same make of card I put in the Colt, if you watch that video. But it, uh, it's a Sound Blaster, I think it's a, a 1.0. It has the chips for uh, backwards creative music system support, so it's backwards compatible. So this is an 8-bit card, uh, original Sound Blaster, like I said, I think it's a a 1.0 so this is great for all you know the early FM tunes usually you know like I usually say on an 808 machine you're not, a lot of those early CGA games uh, they do not even support um, you know FM it's all PC speaker but actually since this machine's so powerful you can you know really reliably uh, play a lot of EGA games and even VGA games so this would come in handy on this computer whereas maybe it wouldn't be so handy on a, a true 8088 machine uh, like an original IBM 5150 so this card may actually come in handy I have played some games on this uh, I played uh, I played Ultima 1 and 2 but I played the, the there's fan patches because originally those games are CGA and they look hideous, just hideous. <laughs> so uh, actually, I I got I played the um, the EGA patched games on this machine, and they played very well on it. So stuff like some you know a lot of EGA games stuff. Those this thing will run a lot of games that you would not suspect it could run because of that upgrade chip. And also, you have to have a decent video card. And I believe in my uh, blog article, the card I had was a Trident 8-bit card, which, but I've recently changed that to a ATI VGA Wonder XL. Um, now I did some benchmarks. Actually, this card is very slightly slower than the Trident uh, 8900D that I had in here, but it, it's the, the, it's almost negligible the speed difference. Uh, I think this is a 512 kilobyte video RAM card, but the thing I like about this, it's a 16-bit card, but it works fine. These cards are work great in 8-bit slots. Um, you don't have to do anything. There's no jumpers on it. You just put it in. It auto detects, which I really like about this card. Also, um, there's a bus mouse port. Don't really, <laughs> you don't need it at all on this machine because the PS2 ports. But the cool thing is. It has a port for uh, if you want to use a CGA or EGA monitor and uh, uh, just a regular VGA port and it auto detects so you don't have to play with jumpers or dip switches or anything so this is a pretty cool card I mean between this card the CPU the motherboard like I said this will run some uh, games that you wouldn't suspect a PC class machine to run so uh, I can't think of any off top of my head, but believe me, it does. It's it's pretty fast for what it is. It's possibly one of the fastest uh, PC class machines ever made. And I wanted to add real quick, I forgot. Um, you do really want to put a VGA card in this machine because MCGA, like I said, if you want to play EGA games, which this computer is way more than capable of playing. Uh, remember, the built-in MCGA will not play EGA. It doesn't do EGA. So I really recommend you get a discrete video card for this machine if you have one. So, so that's my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If I rambled a little bit or I was a little bit off, I apologize. I've been up. I think I've had one hour of sleep in the past 24 hours. So I'm probably going to go to sleep after this video, but thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, I can get some more videos out to you guys. Thanks for the support, and uh, remember to check out the blog. So these videos are really just supplementary to the blog, so please check it out. Subscribe, follow the blog, and again, thanks guys.